St. George, a Roman-style church that mimics the Palestinian Bethlehem. Described as the most important of the Coptic Orthodox monuments in the world, it has stood majestically atop one of the towers of the Babylon Fortress for more than 13 centuries, even though it is one of seven churches in that region. However, the Sheikh of Egyptian historians, Ahmed ibn Ali al makrizi who is known as Taki al-Din al makrizi described it as the most beautiful church in that Roman fort. St. George, a church established by a wealthy man of the early Christian era, called Athanasius, in the year 684 AD. It was named after St. George, who was born in the first half of the 3rd century AD, to Christian parents, from a lineage of kings and wealthy people. He is the son of Prince Anastasius, the ruler of the city of Malatya, which is located east of the town of Cappadocia in Asia Minor, and Princess Theobesti, the daughter of Prince Dionysius, the ruler of the city of Lydda in Palestine. His father died when he was ten years old, so his mother returned him to Palestine. When Athanasius arrived in Palestine, its ruler, Bastus, took care of him. At the age of 17, he joined the army, and in a short time he became the leader of 5,000 soldiers, despite his young age. He was proficient in literature, law, and church sciences, and he was also proficient in the Greek language, which is the dominant language of the city, in addition to to his chivalry, the fame of which reached the Roman ruler, who granted him the title of principality. After the death of Bastus, Marcus went to the city of Tyre in Lebanon to meet Emperor Dadianus, the Persian ruler of Phoenicia, to demand his right to rule Palestine. As soon as he arrived in Tyre, he was horrified to find that its Christian population was hiding their Christianity for fear of the emperor who issued decrees against them. The Palestinian historian Eusebius of Caesarea, the father of ecclesiastical history, and the founder of the idea of publishing the Fathers' sayings and writings, mentioned that he went directly to the emperor's palace to find the decree hanging onto the wall. Demolish the churches, separate, torture, and kill everyone who converts to Christianity and does not submit to us. These bloody phrases were some of the orders announced by Dadianus in the second half of the 3rd century AD, and with them, the Christians of the early Coptic era began to confront the horrors of the presidents and rulers of the states of his kingdom. They had no alternative but to comply with his orders and embrace paganism, or face him and endure torment. That persecution decree was a turning point in the life of St. George. He left all positions to defend his religion and faith. When he confronted the emperor, he tried to seduce him, and because he refused, he ordered him imprisoned and tortured. The journey of torment was not simple or short. It lasted for seven full years during which he moved from one stage to the most severe and extreme stage. They began to mutilate him, then they dressed him in iron shoes full of nails, tied him to an untamed horse, which dragged him, and tortured him with sharp blades that cut his flesh. They also poured hot lead into his mouth, and placed him on a large wheel containing sickles and sharp swords. This tool was known as the crushing machine, and they turned it to crush his bones. Finally, they ordered his beheading on May 23, 263 AD. About four centuries after his martyrdom, the priest Mark Mark, head of the Calamount Monastery, saw a vision of the martyr, ordering him to transfer his remains, which were being carried by a woman coming from the Church of the Martyr in Palestine, and place them in his church in ancient Egypt. When the dream came true, that church was built in the 7th century AD, even, th even though it was one. Of the 371 churches bearing the same name in Egypt, it is the only one that was built in a circular shape in the Roman style. What is strange is that its internal divisions resemble the streets of Bethlehem in Palestine, but the fire that struck it nearly a hundred years ago removed most of its features. To reach the church, you must pass through a large courtyard filled with trees and some decorative monuments that reflect the Arabic touch. Once you reach the church, you will find three doors. The main door is in the middle of the western wall, and is designated for holidays and holy days, while the second door is in the middle of the northern wall of the church. It is always closed, so you will find in front of you only the third door that is used during visits, and it is the smallest of them that leads to the baptistry, and to a wide southern courtyard with a marble fountain. The church consists of a nave, two wings, and a vestibule. The nave is like a wide, square hall, 
with four large columns on its corners, supported by four arches forming a semicircle. In the middle of the nave there was a large bathtub, which no longer has any traces after filling it in and installing new tiles for the floor of the church. The courtyard has three square structures, with each structure surmounted by a high dome, with four windows around each of them. As for the middle structure, there is a wooden dome over its altar placed on four polished marble columns. Inside the dome is a drawing of the prophet of God, Jesus, sitting cross-legged on the throne, with angels standing around him. The three temples carry fourteen pictures of angels, apostles, and saints, including a picture of the living Saint Elias hanging on the southern temple, and another of Saint Stephen hanging on the northern temple. As for the middle temple, which is the largest in size, there is an old picture representing the prophet of God Jesus, in addition to it was dedicated to the name of St. George. In front of each of the altars of the three temples, there are stairs in a semicircular shape, leading to an underground room containing holy water. Facing them is a group of ancient icons that represent the Lady Mary carrying the prophet of God, Jesus, in addition to some pictures engraved on wood, which represent burials and resurrections and some Christian symbols that have been damaged by time and humidity. As soon as you pass through the church gate, you encounter the torture room, which was given this name because it includes some of the instruments that were used to torture St. George, including the cross, the three nails, the crown of thorns, and the iron chains, and some of the pictures that show the stages of the horrific torture to which he was subjected, inside that room. There is a smaller room that resembles a cave in which it is said that he was imprisoned when he was in Egypt. In this room, there are small holes in which the wish papers of Egyptian and foreign Orthodox visitors are, p visitors are placed. In the middle of the church, there is a newly erected pulpit, consisting of thirteen columns, one of which in the front symbolizes the prophet of God, Jesus, and twelve columns represent the prophet's disciples from the apostles. Eleven of them are painted white. One column is painted black and symbolizes Judas Iscariot, who betrayed the prophet, and another column is painted gray, symbolizing Thomas the Doubter. Next to the pulpit to the west is a booth made of red maronite ore, which resembles a granite stone. Near it is a modern image of St. George made of gold and silver. There is also a rare icon of the Virgin Mary, called the Virgin of Cairo, after she was known as the Virgin of Athens and icons made of wood covered with velvet that contain the relics of ancient saints, including the relics of St. George, which made the church a destination for many visitors who wished to heal from illness, diseases, or obtaining blessings and fulfilling wishes. This saint was known for fulfilling the desires and wishes of his visitors, so much so that they called him the quick-witted one. The church was exposed to a fire nearly a hundred years ago, which was directly caused by the entry of modern elements into it so much so that Alfred Joshua Butler, the English historian of Coptic and Islamic antiquities, said about it in his book Ancient Coptic Churches in Egypt that there was not much of it left that could be talking about it. The updates that were added to it to rebuild what was destroyed are nothing but a third-rate imitation of ancient Greek models. All that remains of its original appearance is the Knights Hall in the courtyard of the church, which is 15 meters long and about 12 meters wide, and the middle part. It is lower in height than its two ends, and includes some remains dating back to the 14th century AD. This hall is the first hall in which marriage ceremonies were held in Egypt. Next to the southern wall of the church, there is a compartment containing a picture of one of the saints, while in the middle of the same wall there is another picture representing Saint Demiana, followed by a picture of Saint George riding his horse and wielding a spear to stab the dragon and at the end of the wall is another picture of St. George. Explains the stages of his torture to death. When you leave St. George's Church, you will find in the area near it a monastery for nuns bearing the name of the same saint, and the oldest mosque on the continent of Africa, which is the Amr ibn Laas Mosque. There is also the Jewish Temple, which in the past was a Coptic church consecrated in the name of the Archangel Michael and sold to the Jews. The 56th Patriarch, who bears the same name at the end of the 9th century, along with six other ancient churches, including the Hanging Church, the Church of Abu Sarja, the Church of St. Barbara, the Church of al Rehana Palace, and the Coptic Museum. Therefore, the Babylon Fortress was called the Complex of Religions.